There's a tremendous number of benefits for engaging in peer learning groups. This is known in both the civilian business industry and the military. With all the benefits of peer learning, I have to ask you the question. Do you know the best way to take advantage of peer learning? Stay tuned, for on this episode of The Evolving Warfighter, we're going to talk about an example of a value-based peer learning system developed by one of the American founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin. Welcome to The Evolving Warfighter. My name is Dr. Franklin Nez, and today we're going to explore peer learning groups and how we can take a method developed by Benjamin Franklin and update it and use it in the modern era. I find it interesting that there are a number of peer learning groups that have been quite remarkable in history. Whether it's the philosophers of the Dry Club, the writers of the Inklings, or Benjamin Franklin's model of a peer learning group. Whether we call it a Young Two, a Lead Aprons Club, or maybe what's more commonly referred to as a Ben Franklin Circle. In the fall of 1727, close to 300 years ago, Benjamin Franklin assembled 12 men made up of artisans and trademen to discuss morals, politics, and natural philosophy with a single goal of improving society. Their achievements include forming the first lending library, the creation of the Union Fire Company, the University of Pennsylvania, a volunteer militia, in the Pennsylvania Hospital. One of the reasons why I believe that Ben Franklin's model for peer learning is so effective is that he based it on a value system. Benjamin Franklin believed that the great men of society were more than just a collection of the small but great works in society. He believed what made a great man was the daily activities and actions of that individual. As a result, he created a peer learning group that focused and became very reflective on day-to-day -day activity. They looked out to the world and they tried to find what was good and how to copy the good. They also tried to look into the world and see what was bad or evil and how to avoid or eliminate that in their lives. Benjamin Franklin focused the discussion of his peer learning group around 13 virtues. While normally in a scholarly work I would define these 13 virtues for you, I'm specifically not going to do so here. I'm doing this because I believe that anyone that wants to take the full advantage of a Ben Franklin circle needs to actually research and understand these virtues for themselves. These are not meaningless words that are hung on a wall during group discussion, but they have to be internalized and fully understood. For those of you that want to start your own Ben Franklin circle, I suggest you take the time to truly research and understand the virtues as defined by Ben Franklin. If you're creating a group to advance the interests of civilian business, I suggest you at minimum review the definitions and accept them from Benjamin Franklin. However, if your group feels like these virtues are outdated or need to be updated, or even wish to create a new list of virtues, that's totally acceptable. And in some ways, it might be superior as it creates more thought among the group about what it means to be good. For the military members out there that are trying to form Ben Franklin circles for the advancement of military development, I recommend you consider adopting the value systems of your branch. For example, the seven army values. Or better yet, if you want to take it, the exercise one step further, consider making a brand new value system that you wish to implement in your branch and make sure that the definitions for those value systems are well defined and support the ultimate goal of what you think the good for the military would be. Just like anything of value, you have to work for it. Benjamin Franklin expected the members of his group to show up prepared for their weekly meeting. They had to be prepared to answer one of these 24 questions. These questions were meant to identify the good and the bad that they saw in their daily lives. Additionally to answering these questions, he expected them to write an essay on any topic of their choosing on a quarterly basis. While I do believe these 24 questions are a good model for most Ben Franklin circles even today, you could also use a different approach and at least expecting your members when they show up to be able to talk about a problem or the success they're having in their daily lives. The goal is to show up to these meetings prepared to discuss 
which means at least walking in with a problem that you're facing or a success that you had that you took some time prior to this meeting to analyze so you could brief and explain the situation to your fellow members of the Ben Franklin Circle. Now while you're trying to establish your own Bren Franklin Circle, it's important to pick a good location. You want to find a place that's comfortable, that you can spend some time in, that's rather relaxed, and that you can have a valid and fruitful discussion. For this reason, be careful where you select to try to gather individuals together. Obviously a bar or a club might be comfortable, but you want to make sure that they don't play the music too loud or you're not going at a date or time that's so crowded that it becomes so loud that you're unable to have a conversation. The goal ultimately is to communicate and communicate well with your peers, so keep that in mind when you're selecting a location. When Ben Franklin originally established his group, he selected 12 members. However, I'm going to recommend that you consider starting with a much smaller group say between three and five individuals. And I have a very important reason for doing so. The most important aspect about this group is communication. When one individual is talking, the other members of the group need to be actively listening to what is being said. If you have too large of a group, you have a habit of starting side conversations and all the information is not being heard or understand by every member of the group. And this can interfere with the whole process of discussion, analyzing, and coming to some type of conclusion or recommendation from the larger group. That's not to say you couldn't have a very large club come together at one time for this purpose. I could easily imagine a group of say 40 individuals meeting at a cafe to participate in these type of activities. However, once they arrive there, I'd suggest that they would be broken up to smaller groups, once again around five or so individuals, so they can have these intense small group discussions about whatever the topic is. There are some drawbacks of having those larger groups that are separated and obviously that drawback would be is you're losing trust in the relationship that would be established after repeated exposure to each other. It should be fairly obvious that small groups that stay together that see each other every week would be most likely to understand, build trust, and build motivation among the members of their team. Have a dedicated time for your group to meet. The original Ben Franklin group met once a week. However, in the modern life, this may not always be possible. While it's best to have maximum amount of time together, say several hours a week, this may not be realistic. So when you're starting a group, consider meeting possibly every other week for about an hour to see how this goes. And then you can adjust it based on the needs of the groups and the availability of the group members. Members of my office may have stumbled on a way of conducting a mini Ben Franklin Circle without even knowing it. We called it Coffee and Klauswitz, named after the Prussian military philosopher. We spent the first 15 minutes of our day as we had our first cup of coffee discussing some type of topic. This topic rotated between individuals in terms of their interest in military history, or we discussed some topic that was relevant in the news. I remember listening in delight about a brief topic about the Roman military, Lewis and Clark, or whatever the major news event of the day. Just 15 minutes was enough to kind of encourage collaboration, creative thinking, cause group discussion, and it, it drove our own motivation to look for new learning activities that we could go out and then we could bring back to the larger group. Whatever we found most interesting about our own personal self-development. Learn to understand the true value of silence in these groups. In the Ben Franklin group, while one member is presenting information or a problem, you should do your best to actively listen to what they're saying. This means when they stop talking, there may be a sizable period of time before you develop a response to them. If you find yourself in a group where there's no silence or breaks between conversations, you may want to slow down and take listening a little more seriously. Additionally, understand the value of repetition. If you see a painter at work, they might paint the rough outline of the image they want and then go back over several passes to add more and more detail. This is the same when you're talking in a Ben Franklin group. You might present the problem and present a brief outline of what the problem is. And while members discuss, you may find yourself going back and covering ground you've already covered. But it's likely that you're relaying new information, new details, 
that might be used to fine tune and perfect the solution or response to the question at hand. So don't be worried that you tend to go back to the beginning of the conversation and work through the details all over again multiple times as you work in these small groups. This brings us to the question of how do you select individuals to belong to a Ben Franklin circle? If you're participating in order to improve a business, consider selecting individuals of various different industries and experience backgrounds. It's common that in a select industry that they have a very common approach to solving problems. If you select individuals from diverse industries, an individual from a different industry might select a different style or approach to problem solving that might help you dramatically in terms of driving innovation and applying it back to your primary business. If you're approaching this from a military aspect, consider selecting individuals of various different military specialties or different military branches for much the same reason. You want them to bring a different set of problem solving techniques to the table. This will allow you to drive innovation and think creatively about the problem at hand. While recruiting members of your group, don't discount the value that a novice might bring. While it might seem natural to recruit only experts, novices have the ability to question underlying assumptions in your industry or problem solving method. This might lead to new innovations or new ways to solve problems. So while a novice might not bring so much in terms of experience to the group, they might bring more openness and more creative thinking to finding solutions to the problem at hand. If you're looking for individuals that may be interested in joining a Ben Franklin Circle or pre-existing Ben Franklin Circles, I'll leave you with three resources. First, if you're in the Denver area, I encourage you to look up a gentleman by the name of John Wren. He does considerable amount of work trying to advance self-development and adult education in that area. He hosts a Facebook group called Franklin Circles. Additionally, he holds weekly meetings to discuss various different topics. He's a fine gentleman and I encourage you all to reach out and take advantage of the free education that he offers. The second resource I have for you is BenFranklinCircles.org. They also host a group on Facebook. This organization has a host of information about Ben Franklin Circles, how they get one started, and they can even help connect you to a local group. The last resource I have for you will help the military members out there. The Field Grade Leader, which is an exceptional organization for materials on self-development, has started two affiliate groups, one located in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and the other one at Fort Hood, Texas. These groups, while not specifically Ben Franklin Circles, would be a great way to connect to other military members interested in self-development. It would be highly likely that you could find members of these communities that would be willing to form and take full advantage of a Ben Franklin Circle. If you know about more resources on Ben Franklin Circles, I encourage you to leave a comment in the comment section below. I encourage everyone out there to take a look at the remarkable achievement of the original Ben Franklin Circle and consider taking advantage of the peer learning opportunities that you could create for yourself in your own community. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it enjoyable. For more videos on the topic of self-development and military history, I invite you to subscribe to The Evolving Warfighter. Please like and share with anyone that you might feel would be interested in these topics. Until next time, focus on your self-development so we can ensure that we can dominate the modern battlefield.